Creating great images doesn't always have to be a lot of difficult work. Let's take a look at how I created this render. The first step was to collect some reference images and figure out the direction I was going. I really like the idea of a central composition focusing on a statue. From the architectural elements, what struck me was the use of skylights, a lot of ornate statues, and the order of stone columns and beams that support the whole structure. I started modeling the more challenging part, the columns. I approached it by modeling a single flute, then made use of the array modifier to duplicate it. All that was bent using the simple deform modifier into a cylinder shape. Next was the column capital, which took a little more effort. The way to handle these models is to get a good reference to work from. After that, I trace more prominent features with a strip of polygons. That way, I make sure I have good topology flow and all I'm left to do is handle the gaps between the strips using polygon fill. Also, since this part isn't a centerpiece in my image, there really isn't any need to be precise with the modeling. An add-on that helps me a lot in modeling this way is called F2, which allows me to quickly create polygons with just a single keystroke. The rest of the models are made with very simple box modeling, using only loop cuts and extrusions to make. As you can see, the topology is very simple as these elements take very little part of the image. Most of the details will come from textures alone. To build the whole scene, I used an array modifier on every single element to get the spacing of the columns and create the beams and ornaments on the walls. Altogether, there are no more than four different objects used to build the overall shape of the temple. The last hand modeled piece is the floor, as I wanted to create a custom pattern that would just take too much time to be done in textures. After that, I assigned placeholder materials to know which tiles I want to be black and which white. The statues are 3D scans from the internet that I've collected throughout time. The great thing about 3D scans is that they hold a lot of detail that would usually take days to sculpt by hand. That also makes them have a lot of polygons and can greatly slow down your workflow, especially if you try to edit them or create UVs. Just add a decimate modifier on top. The decimation amount would depend on the statues. Once you start losing detail in the shape, you've lowered the value too much. I knew I wanted a centerpiece statue. That was fairly easy to place as the only logical spot was under the skylight. The other statues were a bit more tricky. They had to break the monotonous composition created by the columns. The way I handled that was picking statues with more interesting silhouettes. The lighting setup is very simple. A blue color in the environment. I brought the strength up until I got a nice blue tint coming from the skylights. The other thing is just a warm area light with a very low spread to simulate light coming from the sun. I didn't use a sky texture or an HDRI as this method gave me more control over the lighting. The one thing that guided me while placing the sunlight was that I wanted to highlight the centerpiece statue. This was done in two ways. Part of the light was hitting enough of the statue to highlight the main features and details, but was still aimed to fall behind it. That way, when I added a cube with a simple volumetric shader, the god rays did a nice job of outlining the silhouette. As for the other shaders in the scene, there are just three. The floor uses a very simple material with low roughness for the white tiles and a duplicate of it in black. The main architecture of the temple also shares a single concrete material with a bump and a normal map. One thing I changed was brightening up the diffuse as it was too dark. I also made use of the triplanar mapping option in Blender as I didn't want it to bother with UV unwrapping. The statues shared a single material too. The two things that made it stand out is the ambient occlusion I used to simulate dirt in the crevices of the statues and adding a touch of subsurface scattering. This softened the feel of the shader and made it stand out next to the harsh concrete material. Also, try to keep the subsurface radius low or it will start looking like wax rather than marble. The camera was quite easy to place. I was looking for a central composition that showcased how large this temple was. Using a wide camera lens and placing the camera low helped a lot. One thing I tweaked was the lens shift, as I wanted to keep my vertical lines straight. Also, when trying out to figure out the overall composition of the image, there are a few things to look out for. Try not to have overlapping silhouettes, as it creates points of tension in the image. This will draw your eye away from the main subject. The same goes for objects touching the edge of the image. 
Last but not least, don't be afraid of having objects that are going out of frame. This creates a sense of depth in the image as it breaks the frame. Very often, I would see people trying to fit everything in their shot, completely ruining the immersion of the image. After that, I was left with post-processing. I already have a video on how to composite the volumetric layers on my channel, so you can check that out. The rest is simple color grading using a color balance node. I try to introduce some warm colors in the highlights and some blue tint in the shallows to balance out the overall feel of the image. After that, I've added some glare and a slight lens distortion and that's about it. Subscribe for more tutorials and thanks for watching!